There was a good reason the samurai adopted Zen philosophy. It taught them to deal with fear, death, and optimize fighting to obtain victory. Today, Zen is rarely taught in fighting, and the focus of martial arts classes are usually all physical, despite the fact that the mental component is the most important attribute in any fight. This video focuses on Zen and Asian strategy for fighting mindset and technique. Zen is not a religion, but a system for understanding yourself, optimizing technique, and performing at your best. The video is of benefit to sports karate athletes, but the focus of all of our video series is on traditional impact karate, looking to reach an understanding of how to damage an opponent, not simply scoring a point. Yeah! Oh. Job. This video, like most of our productions, will introduce a Zen concept related to technique or fighting strategy and then show an example of the technique or application and then follow with real committee footage from either tournaments, belt test fighting or dojo fighting in Japan. The video is of benefit to sports karate athletes, but the focus of all of our video series is on traditional impact karate, looking to reach an understanding of damaging an opponent, not simply scoring a point. It is unfortunate in modern karate sports fighting, which is also a mind game, that athletes are not taught Zen concepts which are the basis of the art they are performing. Some sports karate teams do go as far as to have sports psychologists, and while that is beneficial, it is a shame the athletes are not exposed to the Zen lessons of the samurai, which are profound in achieving victory because the goal was not a gold medal, but a life or death match. Some of the principles taught by sports psychologists mirror that of Zen in the martial arts, and other things taken from Zen are more specifically directed towards combat. The modern term of putting oneself in the zone is directly analogous to the Zen mind state of Mushin. The instructor in this video series, Jason Armstrong, PhD, has lived in Japan with a karate master and has also competed at national and international fighting levels, competing in numerous Australian and Pacific championships, US championships, and also tournaments in Japan. Sensei Jason's emphasis on Zen has been reached by studying it in Japan and also by seeking instructors that taught its principles. He understands the street side of karate, having worked as a bouncer but has also been deeply involved in the sports karate world by competing over a 15-year period between 1986 and 2001. He holds a fifth dan black belt, and while living in Japan, he sought out sparring in Chitoru dojos, plus Goju, Shurikan, and Kyokushin dojos. This video will cover Zen-derived concepts with drills or techniques to cover Mushin, striking voids, optimizing power and speed, as well as strategy. This video is an add-on to Applied Zen's advanced fighting video, which only touches on Zen for fighting, and is also available for download on the internet. We will now show a few short sample clips from the video, which will demonstrate briefly the type of points raised and the teaching style. We hope you enjoy the content. All right, we're going to talk about voids for a while in a few ways. It's that classic uh, Zen saying, you know, you hear the word void used all the time. Sun Tzu's Art of War for strategically obtaining victory always talks about voids in different ways. Uh, the idea of the void is you go into a void to strike an emptiness. Now, if you look at Sun Tzu's uh, classical translation of the use of that, uh, armies would go into a situation which was a void. And one of those voids could be simply the enemy hadn't arrived in that sector or ground yet. Now the advantage that gives them is that they have no barriers to entry, they just walk on in, no fight to go in there. Secondly, once they get there, they can set up defences on a larger scale with surrounding cities, etc. They can send up, set up alliances and all of this preparatory work means any attacking force comes in now has a lot of barriers to entry. 
So they've gained ground without a fight, and more importantly, they gained much with very little effort. All right, so let's look at that as a physical example. This guy, Sensei Nick from here, just grabs me around the uh, lapel collar area from here. All right, I can decide from here to try and break out of this physically with a throw or a break or something like that. But that's a lot of physical effort, all right? That's not little effort on my part. I can even like to impact him in the head. But again, that's fairly physical and requiring a lot of effort, all right? Or I can take one finger and shut his trachea down right here, all right? And he lets go instantly or passes out. There is two options, all right? So I've achieved much with very little effort is the point of striking this physical void on my opponent. All right, let's talk about the void now from a perspective of a uh, more regular committee technique that you might use in a tournament, etc. Okay, so from here, let's say I'm facing Sensei Nick, and he elects to do a front fist reverse punch. Hey, two, all right, then straight away from here. The blocking combination that I'm doing here, and as soon as he got his second arm blocked, his eyes go like that, and they say, uh oh, I'm in a bucket load of trouble here is because I've created a massive physical void on my opponent up the center, right? That's void one. Void two is him in shock saying, I'm in trouble. I've broken his spirit and created a void there, all right? Just one more time. Void three is my counter. So from here, I, straight in here, all right? The throat is my third void, all right? So the point of the fighting combination here is to completely collapse his spirit and create multiple voids on my opponent, is the idea. One of the key ones being, even if that technique does not knock him down, his spirit's been collapsed into a void, allowing me to get an easy access to the counter. All right, so physical void, open the limbs. Mental void, crush the spirit. Third one, strike a void or a cavity on the body where you can easily damage someone in a severe way. In the following drill, we are working on one aspect of Mushin, reading others, and projecting feelings before you throw a technique. This video covers Mushin from a number of standpoints, which includes attacks, defense, and strategy, as well as technique. The point being raised in the following clip relates to not projecting emotion or feelings prior to releasing your technique. The best fighters are completely unreadable, and you cannot predict what is coming. In the full video, we also progress through drills that help understand how to read others and their techniques. The following drill is one I picked up through interactions with Sensei Stan Schmidt, one of the few Westerners who is Japanese certified as an eighth dan. I thoroughly recommend interacting with this famous sensei should you ever get a chance. What I'd like you to do is both take shigabachi or horse stance, so shiko or kibidachi either way. Right? Get nice and close. Alright, that's it. Good. Okay, so what I want Dana to do first is just put the arm out. Okay. Alright, Raj, hands at 45 degrees, like a temple roof. Just in front here, all right, nice and relaxed. All right, Dana is gonna punch. Full speed, full power. You've gotta block it by just tapping, touching with your hand to stop it. All right, the idea for Dana is not to project that she's about to punch, so you can't anticipate when it's gonna happen. Sensei Stan Schmidt called this no show. All right, in other words, you're not showing your intention. That's what the drill's about. So just both of you relax. Do all of the centering where you relax the shoulders, drop the center of gravity to here. Work on it. Dana, go when you feel it. And then both relax up, go back to a relaxed position. Good. Relax. Good. All right, relax back up. All right, not too bad. There's still tension that I can see in your shoulders a little, all right? And that's going to hold you back. So, all right, let's do the same thing. Okay, we'll just come on. All right, so from here, my right hand's here, yours are here, and I'll go where I feel like. So, all right, that's the idea. I want you to relax that little bit more so when you pop it out, you can't feel it. All right, don't think speed. I wasn't thinking speed then. I'm just thinking no show and go. One more time. Bodhidharma, or Daruma in Japanese, who founded Zen and the martial arts in China. The reason Zen flourished so much in Japanese Budo or martial arts is because the samurai had to have a way to cope with death. And Zen allows one to just live in the moment 
and to cope with death. Things the samurai needed, as every day they awoke there was a very good chance they would die. Japan is famous for its Zen arts, gardens and temples. During my time in Japan, I did my very best to further understand Zen and the martial arts. In my 20 years of martial arts, I've decided to integrate Zen and traditional karate together. Many people elect just to practice karate without the Zen component. However, if you do study Zen alongside your martial arts, the longer you train, the more you realize how important it is to become an effective fighter. The reality is that winning a fight, once one has good technique and a good understanding of combat, is primarily mental. And it is the things that Zen teach you related to mental attributes of fighting that allows a fighter to continually get better and improve even while physical ability remains the same or even starts to deteriorate with age. The slide that's up at the moment probably best describes Zen. That is, what can be spoken of Zen is not Zen. The reality is, Zen must be experienced. Realizing this, Zen monks in Japan decided to diagrammatically display the path of Zen. And Zen is the path to enlightenment, or Satori in Japanese. The slide in front of you shows what they came up with. It's a symbolic journey here of ten slides representing a man and an ox. Essentially, the goal here in Zen is to become like a newborn infant again. That is, someone without anxieties, complexes, etc. Someone who lives in the moment and has a completely open mind to immerse themselves in anything new that they wish to understand. In the series of pictures, the man represents the person, the bull represents the ego the person has developed due to a lifetime of habits, experiences, anxieties, etc. During the course of these pictures, firstly, the person has to discover and identify they have these, let's say, psychological uh, build-ups over time. Then they have to clear them and control them. And over the course of the pictures, you see the man firstly discover footprints for the bull, discover the bull, then get a noose around the bull, finally start riding the bull, and eventually the bull or the ego has gone, and the man is left solo again, like a newborn infant, pure. A way to consider why your mindset is so important in fighting is fear. If one has fear in a fight, your opponent will sense it. You will also pre be preoccupied with fear and not be able to perform. Zen is about living in the moment. Fear is a product of living in the future. Fear only arises when one thinks about what might happen in the future in terms of getting hurt. If you do not think about the future and possible harm just exists now, fear will not be there. Karate is often called moving Zen. Seated Zen is what Zen monks and Zen Buddhist monks practice where they meditate in a seated position. In Karate we do do seated meditation, however, most of our study of Zen comes through physical exploration. We start with Kata, which is described in this series. And Kata is obviously an easier scenario to get a state of mind that is correct than fighting, because you are on your own. You then transfer this state of mind to fighting. So ultimately, when you fight, it is actually a very peaceful and relaxing experience. One kata in particular is known as a Zen kata, it's called Sanshin kata. And Sanshin kata is a very slow kata which emphasizes motions tied to breathing and a correct state of mind. It's a kata that's very, very important in working the finer points of mind and body in karate.